All right, for today's video, I've got this amazing text transition effect, which is super easy to make and probably take five minutes to create. So yeah, hope you guys are ready. Let's get right into it. All right, to, so to begin with, we've got our default Blender scene here. I'm gonna do a Shift A and add a text in it. We'll also press Tab so that we can edit the text and I'm just gonna type Blender and use this as my base to create the mesh. We'll click on this object data properties, which is the A symbol here. And uh, over here, we're gonna come into paragraph alignment and change both of these horizontal and vertical alignment to this to center and then i'm going to scroll up and click on geometry and just make sure that we have an extrusion of 0 0.1 meter and also in the bevel we've got an uh, a bevel of 0 0.01 just to make sure that we don't have those harsh edges here all right so once we have this i guess that's all we're going to do you can even select a custom font that you want and uh, work with that choose a good one so that you have a better transition effect but the for for the purpose of this video we're going to go with the default font so once we have all of this set up i'm going to do a right click and then click on convert and mesh so as soon as i do that that text editing option goes away so just make sure that you're you're done with all of your text uh, settings before you actually do this step but now your object is a mesh and now we can actually do some geometry nodes editing on it right so i'm gonna hit uh, my geometry node tab here and uh, then click on new just to add a new geometry node setup and create that effect we've got to go ahead and distribute some points on the faces right so for that the best node we have here is called distribute points on faces and i'm going to take this and join it back onto the original geometry just to make sure that we have our original text as well so in order to join it we're going to add a join geometry node and uh, just make sure that this group input is connected to its mesh as well i'm going to add a density of 500 so that we have got a nice and dense mesh here i'm going to use another cube to create the object that is actually going to create that effect again you guys can use a uh, mesh primitive but I'm, the reason i'm doing this is because of the way i textured it and uh, we're going to talk about it a little later right so we're going to add a cube scale it on the z-axis just to make it nice rectangular shape and uh, just make sure you're applying scale and also just go into the modifier setting of that cube and just add a bevel modifier and add a very slight bevel uh, just so that again we don't have those hard ha edges right and we're going to do a right click and shade smooth on this as well you can also do an auto smooth if you want so we're going to bring this cube into our geometry node setup and now you can hide it and hide it from the render as well because we don't need it anymore we have what we need right so we're going to add an instance on point node in here and just plug this right after distribute points on faces and then we're going to plug this cube into the instances i'm going to add a transform node uh, as, as you can see the scale of these cubes way too big so let's scale them down to about 0.1 let's create an object that is actually going to affect the position of where these cubes are appearing in a transition effect right so in order to do that i'm gonna you can add another icosphere if you want i'm gonna go with cube just to keep it nice and standard or use the shape that you think can create a better shape for your transition each shape which will probably give you a slightly different effect as far as the transition goes i have my cube here i'm gonna apply scale and scale it down on the x-axis a little bit because i don't want it to be really wide we have this cube i don't want to see this cube though so i'm gonna click on this object properties click on visibility uh, sorry click on viewport display and change it to bounce so let's bring this cube in the scene as well you can name it effector if you want so once we have this here, now we're going to use this cube to affect our original geometry. And for that, we can use the geometry proximity node. So let's bring in this geometry right here and plug this distance into the scale. Now, as soon as I do that, can you see it's already affecting stuff, but not as how we want it to, right? So the very first thing is that even if I move this cube, nothing's happening, right? And uh, I want it to be affecting my geometry relative to the position so i can just simply change it from original to relative in this object info node now if you move it along you can see the objects are scaling depending on where this cube is in the space now how do i control it well to control it i can just simply go ahead and add a map range node right here and just make sure two min is set to one and two max is set to zero the effect that i'm trying to create is 
kind of already uh, already showing up here right but let's make it a little bit more dense right so let's bring this up to a thousand and as you can see the scale of these are pretty much similar it's just slightly up and down so let's add a little bit more randomness to the scale right for that we can just simply add scale instances in here and the reason we are not doing it in the original one is because we're already scaling it uh with the object here right so we need another scale instances and then we can add a random value node and just take this and plug this into the scale now we can use float but i used vector to just get a little bit more variation on how i how my cubes were appearing so what i did was i made sure that the minimum and maximum value of uh, x and y axis is one so that it's not scaling weirdly on x and y axis but for the z axis i kept it from zero to three now it will just scale uh, really high on the z axis but it's not going to affect x and y at all i think that's pretty much it for the transition effect all you can just simply do is basically uh, bring up your timeline go back on the x axis all the way where it's not affecting it uh, add a location keyframe go further to about 201 frames and then move it on the x-axis again right until it's not affecting it anymore and then hit i and add a location keyframe again now as you can see the transition effects already created but there is some texturing that we need to do just to make sure that it looks as cool as it was in the original video right so how do we go about doing that well let's switch this uh, sheet here uh, to our shader editor so that we have our texturing available and what we can do is we can just select our effector cube right here and we can hop into the edit mode and i'm gonna press ctrl r to add a loop cut in here right and then we can press ctrl b and just bring it up right up until here and the reason i'm doing this is because i want to add some emission to it right but i don't want the emission to be there on the entire thing right i only want uh, it to be showing up on these sections so what we'll do is we'll first add material to it and click on this plus sign to add a new one and we can name it emission just make sure we are assigning it to these faces right and let's also hop into the edit mode now i like working with cycles i'm going to switch to cycles it works the same in ev as well just make sure that you have ambient inclusion bloom and screen space reflections enabled in ev and then you can click on color management and click on very high contrast let's switch to cycles here and i'm gonna add an hdri real quick so that we see what's happening okay so once we have this i'm gonna click on the render properties once again click uh just make sure motion blur is enabled too while we are at it and just click on film and hit transparent right as soon as i do that our background goes away and we can just add a custom background to work with so uh what we could do in this is that we can just simply add a plane scale it up a bit bring it down slightly and select one of its edges and extrude it on the z-axis and select one edge click on ctrl b to bevel it add some more segments to your bevel and do a right click shades mode now we've got a nice looking background that we can work with now you can see the cube that we the effector cube that uh we originally worked with this back into your scene right and uh, we really don't want to see it so we're going to click on this effector click on the viewport or the object properties once again over here i'm click i'm going to click on visibility and just make sure it's disabled from all the all the revisibility pieces are disabled over here right as you can see that the cube is showing up but it's no longer uh, casting any shadows or anything like that in your scene okay so we're getting there we're almost done so uh let's quickly make our plane a little bit more darker so that we see what exactly is happening so i'm gonna increase the metallic and bring down the specular on this just to make sure it's nice and dark and uh, also keep a little bit of specular we want a little bit of reflections okay also just bring down the brightness of it to really low so that uh it's uh, our text is more more visible right now we can click on the the cube and uh, get to the emission texture and let's delete the principal bsdf and we're going to add emission texture in here let's plug this right in here bring up the emission by five and we can also do is we can add a noise texture take the color and put plug it into the emission uh, now nothing's showing up that much and that's because we really have to go ahead and exaggerate the effect a little bit more so we're going to add a hue saturation node here and we're going to make sure that the saturation is all the way up to five right so now uh, the colors are showing up 
So let's bring it, bring the scale down of this noise texture to 0 0.5, bring up the detail to 8 and the roughness to 0, and we're going to add a little bit of distortion of 0 0.1. We'll also do Control T, so make sure the Node Wrangler add-on is enabled, and we're going to take the object input and plug it into the mapping. Sorry, uh, take the camera input and plug it into the mapping node. Now, as you can see, the entire in the entire flow uh, if the transition as soon as it flows through it will just give different colors uh depending on the different position of the effect right so it's pretty cool that way but yeah and again you can for for the original uh, material you can just give uh, any effect that you want i can just simply either make it metallic bring up the roughness and make it a little bit more darker not that dark so yeah and uh, i guess that's about it that's how you go ahead and create the effect as far as the lighting goes i just went ahead and added another another plane in here and uh, just to make sure that i added a little bit more emission into this as well uh, the emission strength was 10 so it, it so that it has nice nice good lighting coming in and then i also added another cube so simply click on new just make sure you're bringing in a principal volume over here just plug it into the volume bring this all the way up and reduce the volume to 0 0.01 and this gives out a really nice lighting into your scene you can play with it and this works with any kind of object so instead of this effector object if you want to use something else like uh, like a cube or an icosphere or anything just to make sure that you're getting different shapes in here just do that just experiment with it it's really dynamic as far as the effect goes i hope that you guys liked the video and it was helpful if it was don't forget to like share subscribe i'll see you guys in the next video